أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطاهرين Respected elders, brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We have assembled tonight here to celebrate the anniversary of the birth of our master, the leader of the faithful, the commander of the believers, Imam Amirul Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Scholars who have studied his life confess that if you look at all the companions of the Holy Prophet and you find any merit in them, the highest of those same merits you'll find in Ali ibn Abi Talib. Lakini, there are some merits which you can't compare because the other companions did not, indeed could not have them. So you can't compare to say that therefore Ali salam had a better or the best stage of that particular fadila or merit. For example, his birth in the Holy Kaaba, no companion before him, indeed no messenger before him, and no companion after him, indeed no godly chosen individual after him has been born or will be born in the Holy Kaaba. Or the fact that he had the noble parents, Abu Talib and Fatima bint Asad. Or the fact that he was the unique companion who right after his birth was personally trained and taken care of by the Holy Prophet there is no comparison or the fact that he was the first one to declare Islam when the Holy Prophet was chosen to begin his ministry this is unique or the fact that amongst the males he was the first one to pray with the Prophet behind the Prophet and the Holy Lady Khadija behind him in the Kaaba, in the Masjid al-Haram. Or the fact, there is no comparison in this merit that he was the one who slept on the night of Hijrah on the bed of the Holy Prophet. Or the fact that the Holy Prophet after Hijrah did not enter Medina. He waited outside in Quba. Some of the other companions hastened to enter into Medina. The Prophet said, no, I will wait till Ali ibn Abi Talib arrives with the Fawatim. Or the fact that of all the companions, the door of his house and his chamber, just like the door of the Prophet's house and chamber, was allowed to be kept open into the masjid. The masjid where you cannot enter in the state of Najasa or Janaba. And in case if it develops, you must immediately leave from the masjid. Or the fact that in the field of jihad in Medina, in all the battles of Medina, or as far as his knowledge is concerned, or as far as his justice is concerned, and judgments, or as far as his simplicity and distancing from the haram dunya, no even from the halal dunya to be content with the minimum possible so that you take you work the maximum you earn the highest but you use the least and share the rest zuhud there was nobody greater in zuhud than him 
and indeed the pinnacle was the fact that in the event of Mubahala, he was declared to be the nafs of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa And therefore it is not surprising that the Holy Prophet declares that Hubbu Aliyin Iman and Bughdhu Kufr and Nifaq. Therefore to love Ali alayhi salam is a sign of true faith because he had the highest qualities of faith. And therefore to dislike him, indeed to hate him or to oppose him is a sign of weakness of faith or of hypocrisy or indeed disbelief and rejection of the truth. And therefore on the day of judgment he has been declared to be Qasimun Nari wal Jannah. And therefore he has been declared to be Mizanul A'mal, the scale on which everyone will have to be judged compared to him in his faith and conviction, in his character of virtue and in his actions of goodness. However, I would like to focus on one merit that is lesser mentioned, but nevertheless is important. Nahj al is an example of his expression and his speech and his sermons and his sayings and his letters. Yes, those who have studied it confess that he was the Imam al Fusaha of all the eloquent, powerful, moving speakers who could stir up the masses, who could stimulate the mind, who could excite the hearts, and who could create fear in the hearts, who could mobilize people for higher goals. There was nobody more articulate, more elo eloquent, more effective than Ali ibn Abi Talib. In fact, there were those who were so impressed that some khutbas they would repeatedly read and recite hundreds of times in their lifetime and they come and they confess every time we read we are moved no there are some khutbas where they say no we feel like doing sajda just like quran has some verses when you recite it overwhelms you, it arouses a feeling of awe that you uncontrollably and spontaneously respond by submission to Allah. And therefore in front of the khutbah, some of them so powerful that some felt like doing sajda, of course, thanking Allah that he created such a great servant who could speak so eloquently. But there is one another area which is the du'as of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Just like we have Sahifa Sajjadiyya, we have a Sahifa Alawiyya. Sahifa Sajjadiyya may have about 50 or so du'as, though the final number is in hundreds. Sahifa Alawiyya has more than 500 du'as reported from Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. And some of them are in the praise of God, some of them are for asking forgiveness and virtue. Some of them are for special occasions like daily or weekly or monthly or when you see the crescent. Some are for daily different affairs at home, leaving the home at night, when the, you re recite the Quran or when you go for Hajj or when you slaughter an animal. And there's one for marriage also, which inshallah I will share with you later on. And there are some du'as which are in favor of some people and companions, and there are some du'as against some companions. I would like to concentrate on one du'a which we recite tonight, Thursday, the du'a of Kumail. But I will focus on one aspect of the du'a. Dua Kumail, you are aware, is a special dua in that it was taught to a special companion of Imam Kumail bin Ziyad, was not an ordinary companion. He was one of the top most devoted, devout companions. Imam trusted him, entrusted him with an official position to be a governor, governor of heat. There's a sermon in Nahjul Balagha addressing him. This dua, very briefly, if you recall, begins talking about the, the mercy of God. Allahumma inni as'aluka 
برحمتك التي وسعت كل شيء so we talk god is all knowing god is all powerful god is all merciful he knows my problems he has the power to solve my problems and therefore and he is all loving and all willing to solve my problems therefore i come to him and i present to him my problems and i ask the most important thing which is my sins should be forgiven those sins tahtikul isam tunzil an niqam and in another part of dua we say that we have come to you in total and utter desperation man ishtaddat faqatu i've come to you because la ajidu li dhunubi ghafira i do not find anyone who can help me change and become a better person other than you oh allah and why should i not come to you though i have sinned a lot of times because kam min qabihin satarta how many times in the past you have helped me despite my sinfulness yes i do confess and admit i have made mistakes i was ajrayta alayya hukman ittaba'tu fihi hawa nafsi i was distracted by my desires by the devil by the dunya and therefore i disobeyed you now i've come to you confessing apologizing mutadarri'an nadiman munkasiran mu'tarifan and i know there is no way out for me ghayra qabulika uzri unless you admit and unless you accept my admission of sin and my apology i have got no solution to my problem i'm weak if you don't forgive me i'm doomed irham dha'fa badani Oh Lord, if you send me to the fire of hell, I can't even bear the fire of the dunya. How can I bear the fire of the hell? If you send me there, I will tell everybody else in the fire of hell that I have only one being that I love and obey, and that is Allah. I will announce my love to you. I don't think you will ever abandon the servant who prayed to you and who thought about you. No, never. It can never happen. You never created the world to punish people. Whoa. <laughs> Imam is so confident about the mercy of God. You love the creation, that's why you created them. You didn't create us to punish us. Why oh, if I've made a mistake, I apologize. The peak and the pinnacle and the climax of the dua, that's what I want to share with you. Towards the end now, Imam alayhi salam, says ilahi wa sayyidi fa as'aluka bil qudrati allati qaddartaha wa bil qadiyyati allati hatamtaha wa hakamtaha wa ghalabta man alayhi ajraytaha O Lord, I pray to you by your power, by your planning, by your decree, by your careful design everything in the universe if it happens you know it beforehand you are the one who designed the system that enables it to work you are the one who has apportioned everything in its appropriate place with its entity with its ability with its limitations you are the one who created me in this particular time to these particular parents, in this particular community, with these particular abilities, and with the facility to be able to reach to you. And therefore, I invoke you by that power and that plan of yours. That what should you do? I beseech you that you grant me on this night, the uh, eve of Friday, the Thursday night, in fact, in this moment, this sa'a, incidentally, Thursday night is important. In that, the riwayah says, the doors of heavens open up every night in the time of sahar before fajr. And Allah says, who is there amongst you who will pray to me for pardon? I will forgive him. Who is there who is needy? Pray to me, I will grant his needs. Who is sick? Pray to me, I will give the cure. Who needs provisions and risk? Ask me, I will provide. Every night it is before Fajr, except for Thursday night. From the time of Maghrib till the time of Fajr, throughout Allah announces. And therefore Imam says, 
I am praying to you in this time, on this night, special night. No, 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 not this night. Fi hadhihi sa'a. At this moment, yes, sa'a is translated as hour, but it doesn't necessarily mean an hour. It also means the moment. I don't know if I'm going to remain alive for an hour. I want it now, at this moment, this minute, I'm asking you. Not that I deserve it, no. Tahabali, grant me as your special gift to me. What, what do I want from you? And Tahabali, in this moment, كل جرم أجرمت كل ذنب أذنبت كل قبيح أسررت كل جهل عملت كتمته أو أعلنت أخفيته أو أظهرت O oh Lord, all, all my sins, my transgressions, my faults, my omissions, my deficiencies, my mistakes, my errors, forgive them. All, all, without exception. That's a huge demand. And yet, the Imam is inspired by what God Himself has promised us in the Quran. In Surah Zumar, Allah says, Qul, Ya ibadiya alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim. O Prophet, announce. O Prophet, you are my special messenger. I have a special message to mankind. Tell mankind, you are mine. I created you, you belong to me. Ya ibadi. Alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim. You have done things which are wrong, you have done israf, you have crossed the limits, you have sinned, you have hurt yourself, you have hurt others, you have hurt your family, you have hurt the society, the workplace, you have done israf in different areas. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. Don't ever despair from the forgiveness of the Lord. قانيني وسبب إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا. Allah surely, without doubt, will forgive, will forgive sins. Some of them, no. All of them, all of them. Even. Even if they're as many as the grains of sand. Don't limit the mercy of God. Even if they're as many as the drops of rain. Don't limit the mercy of God. Even if they're as many as the stars, which are uncountable. Even if they're big. Even if they're small. Even if they're public. Even if they're private. So long as you sincerely ask, earnestly ask, Truly ask for mercy, you will be granted mercy. So Imam is teaching us, this is a tafsir of that ayah, that this is the way we should pray to God. And then he says, وَكُلَّ سَيِّئَةٍ أَمَرْتَ بِإِثْبَاتِهَا الْكِرَامَ الْكَاتِبِينَ And every evil act which you instructed the angels to record. Uh, no, 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 not ordinary angels. These are noble, honorable, very compassionate, very affectionate angels. You know why? Because there is an angel who records good deeds and who records evil deeds. The one who records good deeds records it ten times when you do it once. The one who records evil deeds records it only once. No, they're so kind and so honorable that the good deed they record immediately. The evil deed they delay seven hours according to the riwayah. So a person has a chance to ask for forgiveness. No! A person who intends to do evil but doesn't do it. The intention is not recorded. Unless he does it, that also it's delayed. But when you intend to do good, immediately record it. And when you do the good act, record it with ten times reward. Kiram al katibin. They have been recording my deeds, the evil ones which I have done. وَأَمَرْتَهُمْ بِحِفْظِ مَا يَكُونُ مِنِّي And you have instructed them and they obey your command to record everything that I do. Everything is recordable. Now with modern technology, 
you can record a lot of things. You can have uh, spy software that can be put on a mobile phone and connected to the internet and you can track down every email and every SMS and every phone call that is made. You can put a device on a landline phone and record uh, with a voice digital voice recorder which is activated by voice every call on the phone can be recorded you can track a person down with the GPS planted in a car up to 300 hours movement of the car is on record and check on the Google Maps you can know exactly where that person is gone with the car computer monitoring devices you can have a logging of the keystrokes every key that is struck you can have a record of that you can know what email he has sent you, what internet activity he has done. No, you can have a listening device pasted on the wall. Up to 30 centimeters of concrete. If somebody is talking on the other side, they can track him down. Modern technology can record. You think the non-physical beings, the angels can't record? The human brain is an amazing recording machine. There's a neurosurgeon. Uh, he says that he, he's an Afro-American with a Johns Hopkins Medical University. He says, um, and he goes to the poor Afro-American centers and he tries to motivate the backward communities to take up education. So he tells them, you know, God has granted us the amazing power of this brain. And he says, all right, from the public, he calls someone, come here in front. Brings him on stage. He says, okay, now turn and face the stage. Close your eyes. And then he instructs him, all right, open your eyes and have a quick glance at the whole of the audience. And now close the eyes. He says, Technology, if it allows us, if I were to perform surgery on the brain of this person who had one single glance at the whole audience, if I can stimulate with the electrodes the right part of the brain, I can make him speak and he can tell me who sat where, wearing what type of clothes. The brain has recorded everything. So are we surprised that modern technology are we surprised that modern technology can are we surprised that the human brain can record so much and therefore angels can't record? Oh Lord, you have, you have asked the angels and ordered them to record everything. And I ask you to forgive me those recorded evil deeds. But you were all watching even above the angels. And there were some things which were beyond the capacity of the angels to record. There were some hidden thoughts, be it evil or good, they are beyond the capacity of the angel to record. But you are watching, and therefore it is recorded. Out of your grace and mercy, you hid it and concealed it from the angels to know the evil thoughts the person was undergoing, experiencing. And you covered it so the public could not know what I was thinking about others. Suspicion, evil thoughts, plan or plots to hurt. When you meet a person, you smile at him. But in your mind and heart, you are plotting evil and God knows that. But you hid it and you do not expose it to the public. Oh Lord, I ask you to forgive me all these types of sins. That's the negative. So purify me. Pardon me. But that's not enough. So now uh, my heart is clean. But my heart is empty. Now fill it. After it's cleaned, fill it with something positive. So I ask you, to grant me the gift of pardon. On this night, there's a lot of showering taking place, spiritual showering. Six things are being showered on this night. I want a share in those six things. Min kulli khayrin anzalta, aw ihsanin faddalta, aw birrin nasharta, 
أو رزق تبسطه أو ذنب تغفره أو خطأ تستره on your servants you send your grace your mercy your benevolence your risk you are sending down on this night risk which is physical risk emotional risk emotional moods moods to feel good you think we are the ones who create it or we receive from above if our hearts are open emotional risk intellectual risk I want a share of this risk because, because you are basitul risk, because you are a razzaq, because you are khayrul raziqeen, because you are dhul quwwatil mateen. So I want the risk from you. Oh, incidentally, to ask for dua at a particular moment, the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt teach us that to pray for risk is much more powerful than the activity that we do during the daytime. So for example, between the Fajr and the sunrise, very crucial moment, the doors of the heavens are open. To make dua for rizq at that time is more effective and more productive in bringing blessings in the rizq than the physical activity done during the daytime. Also likewise, the rizq, asking for rizq during the nighttime of Thursday. And beyond that, O oh Lord, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabb. Three times, Imam Alayhi Salam teaches us to address God as the Lord, the Master, the Nourisher, the Cherisher, the Provider. This is the, this is the dua of all the messengers. All the messengers, when they want to thank the Lord, ask for forgiveness from the Lord, ask for guidance from the Lord, ask for help from the Lord, ask for provisions from the Lord, they use the word Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi. The more we say, the more we recite, the more we repeat, the more we remember Him and forget everything else, the closer we get to Him. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabb. Repetition is very important. Ilahi wa Sayyidi wa Maulaya wa Maliki Rikki wa Maliki Rikki. You are the absolute master. Ya man biyadihi nasiyati, ya Ali man bidurri wa maskanati. You have total power over me. You have total knowledge about my problems. If I've come to you, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. As'aluka, and that is, this is the pinnacle now. As'aluka bihaqqika wa qudsika wa a'zami sifatika wa asma'ika. I ask you by your absolute truth nothing else other than you has got absolute truth everything else is secondary everything else is a manifestation everything else is a shadow you are the original light you are the absolute truth and your majesty and your exaltedness and your glory i pray to you by that and I pray to you by your names, your beautiful, excellent, perfect, ultimately infinite good names. Nobody can know what those ultimate names are. Is it Rahman? Is it Allah? Or is it something beyond that? Amirul Mu'mineen in, on the battlefields had one dua. The battlefield, the dua which made him successful was the ism of Ism A'zam. When he was asked, he said, that was Yahu. Ya man lahu illa hu. Allah is Raziq, Allah is Hafid, Allah is Nasir, Allah is Qadir, Allah is Qahir, many names. But above these names are the supreme names. He is Rahman. No, beyond that, He's Allah. No, beyond that, He is Hu. Qul. Who? Who Allah? Ahad. Oh Lord, I ask you by the highest of your names, and therefore I want the highest of what you can give me. Oh, incidentally, Shaitan also makes a similar dua. Fabi'izzatika lauhuyannahum ajma'in. Oh Lord, by your majesty, the ultimate one, I will misguide the whole of mankind. Look at the contrast. By your highest name, O Lord, I ask you 
أن تجعل أوقاتي في الليل والنهار بذكرك معمورا نمبر وان وبخدمتك موصولا نمبر تو وأعمالي عندك مقبولا نمبر ثري بس from your highest and your ultimate names I'm asking only for three things number one I want every moment of my day and night to be filled with your remembrance. Kwa nini? Kwa sababu, if I remember anything else, be it my nafs, be it the devil, be it the dunya, be it the admiration of other people, be it even your creation, if I get engrossed in them and forget you, then I'm a loser. But if I remember you, because you are the all-perfect, it will pull me towards perfection. Because everything else other than you is deficient, limited, defective, self-interested, animal, it will pull me down. So all I'm asking, O oh Lord, is make every moment of my life filled with your remembrance. One. Number two, وَبِخِدْمَتِكَ مَوْصُولًا And I want every moment of my life to be in continuous service to you and you alone. I have two options. يَا بَنِي آدَمَا أَلَمْ أَعْهَدْ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمَا أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ الشَّيْطَانِ Either we follow the devil or we follow Allah. Khidma of Allah, oh, oh incidentally Allah doesn't need khidma. If we worship Him, and we serve Him, and we help His creation, then we are doing the khidma. To obey Him, to remember Him, to worship Him, that is the khidma. So it's not enough to be remembering Him, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah. No, that's not enough. The next step is this dhikr leads us to the khidmah. Practically, we should be serving God and God alone. Practically, we should be serving the creation of God. God says in Hadith Qudsi, the poor people are my family. Whoever helps my family, the poor people, he has served me. Wa وَأَعْمَالِي عِنْدَكَ مَقْبُولًا O oh Lord, so I remember you, so I act to serve you, but that's not enough. I want my service to be acknowledged, to be appreciated, to be rewarded. Kwanini sababu. I may do some things in a wrong way, sorry, rejected. Oh, I may do it right way, but not with the right niya of ikhlas. It was done to show others, sorry, rejected. Oh, no, I did it with, in the proper way, with the right knee of ikhlas. Lakini, later on, I did something sinful which cancels the effect. I give sadaqah for the sake of God. And then I tell that person a comment, a remark that fee makes him feel humiliated. Allah says, if you hurt that person's feeling, then your sadaqah is batil. Oh Allah, make my service acceptable I should know how to serve you properly and to serve you sincerely and to serve you respectfully towards the creation and then finally Imam says O oh Lord قوي على خدمتك جوارحي واشدد على العزيمة جوانحي وهب لي الجد في خشيتك والدوام في الاتصال بخدمتك O oh Lord I want to do good, but I need the strength. So give me that physical strength. Oh Lord, I want to do good, but I need the motivation and the inspiration. Motivate me. Oh Lord, I want to do good, but I can only sustain my goodness if I have proper recognition of who you are. I should feel a sense of respect, reverence, no, awe and fear of your presence. Give me that stage of Iman. And number four, make my service to you continuous. Don't make it interrupted. Some days I'm good, some days I'm not good. 
in the mosque I am prayerful, outside the mosque I forget you. Sometimes I pray, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I pray, sometimes I don't. No, I want a I want a continuous state of serving you and you alone. And finally, towards the end, now Imam asks for six things, and I end this discussion. These six things now are taking us to a higher level. We're not only asking to remember God, we're not only asking to serve God, and we're not only asking that our actions should be accepted. Now we want to go to a higher level. Hatta asraha ilayka fi mayadeen sabiqeen. That not only should I do good and good all the time, but I should be the foremost in doing good. I should be the first one to do good. Number one. No, 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 that's not enough. Number two. Wa usri'a ilayka fi al-barizin. For those who have come out boldly to do good. I should be the one who should be the fastest. Not, sh not only should I be the first, but also the fastest, the swiftest. Number three. Wa ashtaqa ila qurbika fil mushtaqeen. All of this to do good, to serve you. And to get my deeds acceptable is so that I get close to you and I aspire for your pleasure. No, 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 no. I don't want only your pleasure. I want to become mushtaq. Shawq means that I should be burning with the zeal to serve you. It means I should be restless if I don't serve you. I've come across people, you meet them, Come the time of salah and they're fidgety. They're restless. Time for salah. I've got an appointment. Sorry. We better stop. I need to go and pray. This is the ashtaq ilayka fil mushtaqeen. Number four. Wa adnu wa min kadnu wa mukhlisin. And I should get near to you. No, no, no. Near is qurb. Dunu is a highest degree of and nearness and closeness to God. I want to become sincere. I want to become ready to give everything I have for you and you alone. Therefore, I can get closer to you. Sincerity means selflessness. Mukhlis is the person who is not selfish, who is unselfish. The more selfless we become, the closer we become to God. I want to reach that level, number four. Number five. I want to be able to feel your presence, to feel the awe. No, I want to fear you in such a way that I am convinced and certain of your power and your presence. You know, people fear many a times, even when they're not certain of the risks involved. Samahani, for this bad example. We've got a building here that is potentially condemned. We're waiting for the final official government engineer assessed declaration. But the fear is there, the risk is there. And therefore notice for all this time period, there was caution. Sometimes we're not sure, but the potential risk is enough to make us careful and to guard ourselves. Imam says, no, I don't want to work on probability. Uh -uh. I want to reach the stage of yaqeen. I want to be absolutely sure about your presence, about your power, about your knowledge, about your generosity, if I do good, about your punishment, if I do evil, such that I fear you more than I fear anything else. Number five, and finally, number six, وَأَجْتَمِعَ fi جِوَارِكَ مَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And finally, therefore, I should be rewarded the company and the association and the assembly of the believers in the Akhirah, because in the dunya, I kept their company, the company of the God-fearing, God-seeking, 
believers and the faithful. Therefore, I avoided sinful gatherings. I avoided gatherings where we were just wasting time. I avoided gatherings where there was just gossiping and backbiting and slandering and accusation and humiliation and abuse. I want the company of the God-fearing believers. You tell me now this dua as a training tool for the best of the companions. If recited with this proper understanding, doesn't have the potential to change us, not only to become good sometime, but good all the time. Not only to become good all the time, but to strive to become better. Not only to become better, but to become the first, the foremost, the fastest. Nobody, nobody, the Riwaya says, should be living in a community if he's our follower of the Ahlul Bayt, the Riwaya says. And if there's anybody else of another sect of Islam, or no, another faith who is more pious, virtuous, charitable, generous, good doer than us. Otherwise, we're not true Shia of Ali. How do I get to that stage? Dua Kumail. May Allah give us tawfiq. A short message I would like to share in Gujarati. Aji apne apna pella imam ni viladat ni khushi manave chhe. Mane ek wat taraf tamari tawajjo do raun chhu. Khuda wande mutaal ni kudrat ane any taqdeer ane qadar ane qaza pramane baddi chijo no ek karan ane ane hikmat hoye chhe. Hazrat Amir ni wiladat khana ka abama in usu hikmat hoy shake a ek mojiza che ek ewo mojiza ke Hazrat ni ma Fatima binti Asad awe che Kaaba ni nazdik darwajo Kaaba no diwar tute che khule che bai andar jaye che diwar band thai che manaso koshish kare che kholwano nathi kholi shakta darwajo char divas pachi ma nikre che bachcho sathe mojiza ek evi mojiza je ke tarikh na guzashta ma nathi thyu ane hamna sudhi ane ant aakhir sudhi nathi thavano sual agar khuda wand mutaal ni har amal ma ek hikmat che to aa kaam nu hikmat su che Bijanu kewanu che, bija ulamanu, ki a ek ewo amal che ke Hazrat Amir nu sharaf ane maqam batarwa waste. Bijanu em kewanu che, nai, Hazrat ni sharaf nai, Kaaba ni sharaf batarwa waste. Bijanu kewanu che ke nai, Kaaba ne buli jau, Hazrat ni ma Fatima binti Asad ni tame juo Ane marri Isa alayhi salam, Maryam em ne juo Eni viladat kya ta hai Isa alayhi salam? Ek haywan na stable ma Ane a khuda na gar ma A tri ji wat Chothi wat Kadach ishaar ho che ke ha Fatima binti Asad ای جسمانی ما چه علی علیہ السلام نی پن روحانی ما حضرت نی کعبہ چه بلکہ این احتبال اتر کعبہ قبلہ چه کونی واسطے توحید ما مانو آوارونے اتلے حضرت نی توحید نو درجو اتلو اونچو کہ جنہیں بھی نماز پڑھو ہوئے خدا آبا سے نزدیک پہنچو ہوئے آمانس نی وسیلہ تکیتہ میں پہنچی شکو شامتے کہ آمانس اے چھے کہ جو بٹو نے توڑی نائی کھا نہ مدین جارے پیغمبر مدین میں آوی گیا ہاتا انہیں فتح مکہ نہ چاہی میں نہیں اینا تھی پہلا مکہ ما ہجرت تھی پہلا بلکہ ہجرت نی رات پوتا نی روایہ چھے حضرت نی حضرت امیر کے چھے پیغمبر منے کی دا اینا کھاٹلا ما سوا نو پن کھاٹلا ما سوا تھی پہلا آپ نے گیا کعبہ ما 
ઈમાને કીધા તું નીચે જ્યાં હું તારી પર ચરું છું આ બુતોને મને તોરું છે હું એમના મારા પર ચહેરા પણ હું એને સંભાળી ના શકો તો પછી મને કીધા ઉતરી હું ઉતરું છું હું નીચે બેસું છું તું મારી પર ચર આ હિજરત ની રાત છે હું પૈગંબર ના કંદા પર ચહેરો અને બુતને ઈમાને ઇશારો કર્યા કઈ બુતને કાઢીને તોડી નાખું अगर आपने साचे नमाज पड़े आबला तरफ इमाम वसीलो नमाज जय आपने पड़े जमात नमाज રિવાયતમાં છે કે તમે હંમેશા ગો તો એવા ઈમામને કે એ આ ઈમામ જે છે એ તમારા રિપ્રેઝેન્ટેટિવ બનીને જાય છે ખુદાના ખિદમતમાં તવજ્જો આપની કાબા તરફ કોણ આપના આગળ છે જેની પાછળ આપને નમાઝ પડે છે કાબા તરફ એવા હઝરત હઝરત અમીર કે જો બુતને તોરવા વાળા કે જો ખુદાથી નજદીક બલકે જો ખુદાથી એટલા નજદીક કે જો ખલ કે ખુદાને નથી ભૂલી જાતા નમાઝ ની હાલતમાં રોકુ ની હાલતમાં મિસ્કીન મસ્જિદમાં આવે હઝરત ખુદા પાસે પણ ખલ કે ખુદાને ના ભૂલી જાય આપને યા તો ખલ સાથે છે તો ખુદાને ભૂલી જાય છે ખુદા સાથે છે તો ખલકને ભૂલી જાય છે પણ ઈમામ એ છે કે જો ખુદા પાસે બી હોય અને ખલ કે ખુદાને ના ભૂલે ઈ મૌલુદ કેબાહમાનીમ બિફોર આઈ સ્ટાર્ટ ધી સોલમનાઇઝેશન ઓફ ધ મેરેજ કોન્ટ્રાક્ટ આઈ વુડ લાઈક ટુ એડવાઇસ ધી મેરિંગ કપલ્સ અ લિટલ એડવાઇસ ફ્રોમ ઇમામ અલી અલાઇસલામ અબાઉટ મેરેજ દિસ ઇઝ અ ડો વિચ ઇઝ રિપોર્ટેડ બાય Imam when he was deciding for marriage Allahumma arzuqni zawjatan salihatan wadudan waludan shakuran qanu'an ghayura Oh Allah I don't know I, my family comes and tells me this lady is good uh, my friends introduce I may have come into contact but we can never know the true personality of a person to its inner core. Yes, the outward appearance we can judge. But oh Lord, you guide me. Guide me, make it the right occasion, the right meeting, uh, the right family member sees this person, my friends see the person, and they come and introduce to me a woman who has these six qualities. Incidentally, Imam is praying for the woman. But the same applies for the man. I want a woman who is virtuous, not someone who deliberately and knowingly does sins no she should be virtuous good doer she should be loving she should be thankful and grateful whatever we have we may not have the best but she should be grateful for the little that we have number 4 she should be content with what we have number 5 she should be very modest modest meaning in front of the na mahram full hijab with her husband no hijab no what's the reason of being shy with your husband and open with the na mahram amazing dua and then imam says in ahsan to shakarat she should be supporting me if i do something good she should be thankful and appreciating towards me believe you me biggest problem in marriage no appreciation lots of things taken for granted in asatu ghafarat if i make a mistake she accepts my apology and she forgives me she doesn't keep in her heart she doesn't retaliate she doesn't abuse back number 3 wa in zakartullah aanat if i remember god she comes and helps me doesn't stop me no i want this thing to be done and it must be done now ala i mean dua i mean salah i've got other commitments وَإِن نَسِيتُ ذَكَّرَتْ In case if I'm late in remembering God, 
she prompts me to remember God. وَإِنْ خَرَجْتُ مِنْ عِنْدِهَا حَفِظَتْ If I leave her presence and go away in my absence, she guards my honor and dignity. وَإِنْ دَخَلْتُ عَلَيْهَا سَرَّتْنِي When I come back to her, she does everything to please me. The riwayah says, if there is a fallout between husband and wife, the wife should not go to sleep till she has made sure she has pleased her husband. The wife is being referred to, but it applies to the husband also. You want your ibadah to be accepted, you cannot if you have displeased and hurt deliberately somebody else. If I request something from her, she obeys me willingly. If in case I need to emphasize something and I say, Qasam of God, you should do this. She respects that Qasam. If I have angered her and gotten angry with her, she should try to pacify me and please me. Hey, this woman is from heaven. But the God is the God of heaven. So Allah, Imam says, Ya Dal Jalali wal Ikram. Oh, the one who is majestic, therefore has the power to create such a woman. Wal Ikram, and you're honorable and graceful and benevolent. You will give me this request. Habli, Habli. I want a gift from you, O Lord. Such a woman. Sorry. Not such a woman only. The woman can make the same dua and say, I want such a man. Amir is making the dua for a woman. But that's because he has all these qualities. Let's pray to Allah with the barakah of this night. Those of us already married, make sure we fit this bill. Those who are planning to get married should aspire for such partners. And tonight, definitely, we pray for your success. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.